There is a famous Chinese myth that talks about the gates of hell opening on the full moon of the seventh lunar month. It is believed that the spirits of the dead are free to roam the world of the living, as if a portal between both worlds has been opened. During this time, locals celebrate a festival called the Hungry Ghost, which is a counterpart of Halloween or the Day of the Dead. A newlywed couple, Melissa and Yul, decide to spend their honeymoon in China during the length of the festival. They immerse themselves in the local culture by attending parades and rituals, visiting shops, and taking pictures. Later, the couple meets their guide, an old man named Ping, who drives them to the village where Yul's relatives live. Yul gives him a matching shirt, with the design of the month of ghosts, while Melissa gives him a bottle of wine, as an appreciation gift for his services. When the night falls, Yul falls asleep from drinking too much, leaving Melissa and only Ping awake. Melissa apologizes for acting obnoxious, but Ping assures her it's fine. At this point, they have been driving for hours, but still haven't reached the village. The roads in the countryside are tricky and isolated since the vast lands are used for cattle farming. In the middle of the conversation, Melissa asks if the legend about the hungry ghost is true, wondering if there are people who believed in it back then, when they first started the festival. Ping notes that it was an old tradition, but is mostly celebrated for fun now. However, he agrees that some people still believe it's real, prompting her to question Ping's own belief. Hours pass again and they reach a village. However, they are not where they are supposed to be. Melissa is already asleep when Ping decides to ask for help from the locals in the village. Before he can step out of the car, Melissa wakes up and he admits that they are quite lost at that time. He tells her to wait in the car while he goes out to ask for directions. He stops for a while and tells Melissa that both she and Yul are good partners to each other. Melissa finds it odd but she dismisses it as some warm compliments from Ping. Time passes by, and Ping hasn't returned yet. She starts to feel the need to go to the restroom, but since she doesn't have a choice, she decides to do it outside. All of a sudden, she hears a gong ringing so she immediately makes her way back to the car and wakes Yul up. She mentions that Ping has been gone for almost an hour already. Yul can feel his head pounding from a hangover but insists they go out there to find Ping. He grabs a flashlight and urges Melissa to come with him. The village looks deserted. No one is around. Yul calls out to Ping, hoping to find him. They go deeper into the village and notice how weird the place is. All the windows have been shut. Knocking on houses also proves fruitless. When they reach the middle of the village after following the sound of a dog barking, they notice a ritual set up where several live animals have been put in a fence tree. The tree is adorned with ornaments and seals. When they notice the gong hanging from the tree, they hear someone talking inside a house, so they try to communicate and ask for Ping's whereabouts. But they receive no proper response, and the next thing they hear are the other locals chanting. When the atmosphere becomes too creepy due to the strange voices coming from the homes, Melissa urges Yul to leave. They hurriedly return to their car even without Ping, only to find out that it has been splattered with blood. Yul starts cursing, thinking it was some kind of a prank pulled by local teenagers. Melissa tells him to go inside the car and they will be leaving without Ping. On their way, the couple starts fighting over who should have been more attentive to where they were going. Yul has been asleep the whole time so he clearly has no idea how to go back to the city. Melissa feels frustrated at their current situation. They are in the middle of nowhere, driving in a blood-covered car. Their phones are not working due to poor reception, and the feeling of being in an unfamiliar place is making Melissa's anxiety worse. Yul assures her that everything's going to be alright, they just have to go back to where they came from. Melissa finally calms down and asks about what happened back in the village. Yul explains that the countryside people are more old-fashioned, therefore, they have to stay inside their houses after dark. The animals outside are also left as live offerings for the spirits. It serves as a protection for the locals, to prevent the dead from entering their homes. The chanting of the locals is also part of the ritual, and though Yul cannot understand it clearly, he thinks it is an invitation. The couple continues driving away from the village, but they still haven't seen anyone or even another village. Yul promises to turn around in five more minutes, and turns the radio on to check if there is any tower nearby. A man starts speaking on the radio in Cantonese, but since Yul can barely understand it, all he can make out of it are words connected to rituals, offerings, and sacrifice. All of a sudden, a pale creature runs past their car, startling them. Yul avoids hitting the creature, causing him to steer the car off the road. He tries to figure out what they saw earlier and believes that it was an man. When he starts the car again, he discovers that they are stuck in the mud, preventing them from leaving. He even switches seats with Melissa, but their efforts prove fruitless. She tells Yul to go out and give the car a little push, but he is hesitant, afraid that the man will come and get him. When Melissa tells him she will do it herself, Yul forces himself to do it. He steps out of the car and quickly inspects the area before pushing the car. With all his strength, Yul pushes as hard as he can, while Melissa urges him to try harder. Suddenly, he hears a strange noise coming from the bushes nearby. He feels the adrenaline rush kicking in, which allows him to get the car unstuck. He hurriedly gets back inside the car, and they drive away in relief. Still in a state of panic, Yul asks Melissa about the noise, which she dismisses as sounding like a pig being slaughtered. Her calm demeanor irritates Yul, so he starts yelling at her for looking like she doesn't care at all. Melissa loses her composure and blames Yul for their current situation. She reminds him of wanting to go on a beach for their honeymoon but Yul insisted they visit his hometown. 
They start yelling at each other until they come upon an injured man lying in the middle of the road. Yul insists on going back and leaving the man but Mel refuses. She wants to help him. Despite Yul's pleas, Mel steps out of the car and approaches the man, forcing Yul to do the same. The man tries to warn them that something is coming, but they cannot understand what he is saying. He is severely wounded and appears to have been attacked. Though his words are incomprehensible, the fear and the urge to survive can be seen through his eyes. It's like he was trying to outrun something terrible. Yul tells Melissa they need to go, but they suddenly hear strange noises coming from the dark. They hurriedly take the man to their car, not wanting whoever attacked the man to catch up. Seconds after they enter the car, a group of pale creatures attack them. They look like men whose bodies are covered in a white substance. Yul reverses the car, in hopes of escaping from their pursuers. Melissa tells him to go back to the road, but Yul cannot find a chance to do so with the pale creatures still after them. All of a sudden, the car stops. It appears they hit a ditch and cannot get out. The car is stuck. As panic starts gripping their minds, Melissa tries to calm Yul down to think clearly. They take a few seconds to breathe and figure out what those creatures were. The man they rescued explains that the creatures are called moon demons. If they stay much longer inside the car, the moon demons will eventually find them through the tire trails. So Melissa suggests they leave. The man leads them through the fields where they try to hide as stealthily as possible. While they briefly stop for a moment to observe, they hear the sound of the gong. Fear starts rushing through their veins again, prompting them to seek the safest place they can find. The sound of the gong stops and they momentarily hide behind tall grasses. Just then, the moon demons arrive, scanning the place. Our main characters try their best to stay quiet, but the man cannot seem to prevent himself from making noise, so Yul covers his mouth. As soon as the moon demons leave, the man leads them to a nearby village. There, they come across a dog whose stomach has been ripped open by the moon demons. Several chickens which have been slaughtered are scattered across the ground. The man knocks on the doors and begs for the villagers to let them in. However, the villagers know better than to help someone who's being chased by the demons whom they made offerings for. They are afraid to get involved. The man begs for them to let even Melissa inside since she's not from China, but the villagers refuse to listen. The villagers start chanting the same thing, inviting the moon demons near them. The trio has no choice but to flee to a nearby barn. The man tells them they need to find something alive as an offering and put it outside for the demon to take instead of them. If they fail to provide an offering, the moon demons will find them. However, there are no animals or anything alive other than them present inside the barn. As they try to find anything that can help them, they hear a noise and a distant voice. Minding every step they take, Yul and Melissa try to find the man but all of a sudden, the man strikes Yul's head. Melissa tries to stop him but he manages to strike Yul again several times. Melissa fights back but the man overpowers her, forcing her to crawl away. He then starts pulling Yul toward the door to use him as to save his life and Melissa's. Yul manages to grab something, preventing the man from taking him outside. The man then tells him not to be a coward and just do it for his wife. He raises the weapon again and attempts to hit Yul, but Melissa rushes to his aid. In the ensuing struggle, Melissa ends up pinned on the ground but Yul gathers his strength to help her. Suddenly, a pounding sound at the door grabs their attention. The moon demons have found them and are now trying to enter the barn. Yul, Melissa, and the man hide as the moon demons inspect the area. One of them almost catches the couple, but the man suddenly yells and all the demons rush to him. Yul and Melissa find a chance to escape while the man is being pursued by the group of moon demons. The couple find their way back to the car, where they rest for a while. Yul is severely beaten and is now feeling a little ill. They decide to barricade themselves inside the car in the meantime. Melissa grabs the phone, but there is no reception. Help is nowhere to be found. While the couple makes up for their earlier disagreement, the man suddenly appears outside the car, asking for help. He has led the demons to them. Melissa and Yul duck inside, trying to avoid getting seen by the demons. However, his cry for help reveals the couple's location to the demons, who start attacking the man first right in front of them. Yul cannot take it anymore so he honks the car horn, momentarily pushing the demons away. The man, who is barely breathing, pleads for his life and asks them not to let the demons take him. They watch in horror as the demons pull the man into the fields. While the demons are away, the couple tries to find any weapon they can use to defend themselves, but there is only a flashlight in the dashboard. Yul remembers they have a tire iron, which may be inside the trunk. However, they cannot take their chances by going out of the car so Yul pulls out the back seat, revealing the trunk. When he finally grabs a tire iron, they find themselves surrounded by the moon demons. In an attempt to fend them off, Yul presses the horn again, which only makes the demons more hostile. They slowly start pounding on the car until they become more aggressive with every hit. The windshields crack and the moon demons reach inside the car to grab them. They squeeze into the trunk as the demons claw their way in. Despite the struggle, they manage to exit through the trunk in time and then outrun the demons. The demons realize they are already gone and a chase ensues. They end up in a cemetery where they seek refuge inside a crypt. As the couple anticipates the arrival of the moon demons, they hear the same voice of a man they heard on the radio earlier. Yul believes that the voice has fended off the demons. However, the longer they hear the voice of the man, the more Yul starts falling into a trance. The voice is telling them to come to them. Melissa cannot understand what the voice says, but she trusts Yul, who tells her they need to go to the source of the voice. The couple is compelled to leave their hiding place, 
and the voice leads them to a rundown candle-lit house, convincing Yul that it is where they can find safety. A group of villagers can be seen staring at them from the balcony of the house. They find themselves inside, where a large number of villagers dressed in black are gathered. Since they are in a trance, they agree to drink something the villagers offered them. Then, they lead the couple upstairs where another group of villagers wait for their arrival. The drink starts to take effect and they can feel their visions blurring. They cannot even respond on their own, while the villagers are giving them strange looks. Having fallen deep into the trance, they allow the villagers to undress them. They then engage in a sexual act in the middle of the room, while everyone watches. Melissa slowly starts to comprehend what's happening when she sees the moon demons appear in the room with them. She tries to wake Yell up, but only finds a moon demon on top of her when she looks up. Then, everything goes black. Melissa regains consciousness in the middle of the fields, tied up to a bamboo tree, back to back with Yell, Knowing that they don't have any chance of survival, Yell starts telling Melissa that his family would be really glad to meet her. But he apologizes for choosing to go to their hometown instead of taking a vacation on an island in Hawaii. He tells her he loves her, almost like accepting their fate. Melissa refuses to give up and asks him to try breaking free. While they're at it, the moon demons appear. The villagers are offering them to the demons, as the demons are all over them and start caressing their faces. Yul begs that they take him, instead of Melissa, to which they agree. They bury their claws in his face and start attacking him, before taking him away, leaving Melissa alone. Another demon attacks her and renders her unconscious. When Melissa wakes up, Yul is nowhere to be found. She makes her way into the house where she finds her and Yul's clothes folded neatly on the floor. After taking some time to mourn the loss of her husband, Melissa changes into her clothes. She quietly grabs Yul's belongings, including his wedding ring. Despite having no tears spilling from her eyes, the heavy emotions gripping her heart are too profound for words. The room seems to mourn with her, a silent atmosphere, fitting for the gravity of her emotion. While she cradles the wedding ring in her hand, a familiar voice speaks to her. It's Ping. Melissa is taken aback. They have been looking at the village for him. But it turns out he's with the villagers. She immediately turns her head to face Ping, who tells her that Yul has made a sacred for her sake. After realizing what's happening, Melissa rushes upstairs and attacks Ping, unleashing all her frustrations and anger on him, blaming him for the loss of her husband. Ping begs for her to stop while defending himself from her fists. After a while, Melissa stops, catching her breath. She crawls to the side of the balcony and tries to comprehend the situation as if everything is slowly coming to light. Ping touches the blood flowing from his nose and then finally decides to tell Melissa the truth. He explains that the moon demons come to their village every seventh lunar month, during the night of the full moon. And every time they come, they take one of the villagers with them. In order to protect the village and its people, they decided many years ago to lure outsiders and use them as a instead. He apologizes for what he has done. This explains why he complimented the couple before he got out of the car, pretending to ask for directions when they first arrived in the village. Melissa demands to know what happened to y'all. It turns out that the living taken as the offering is brought to a place where the demons prepare them for their final journey and by the moon falls, the living will be one of them. Melissa asks him where Yul was taken, but Ping explains it is too dangerous for her and that she cannot go there. She refuses to give up on Yul and begs Ping to help her. She eventually convinces Ping, who tells her to follow the path that led the moon demons to the village. The candles will show her the way. She immediately prepares to leave. Ping gives her a final warning that going there would cost her her life. Melissa refuses to listen. What's more important to her is saving her beloved husband. Fueled by determination and anger, Melissa traverses the candle-lit path on the fields, hoping to see her husband at the end of it. She reaches the end of the trail and finds herself at the entrance of a cave. The sound of her breathing matches the intensity of the situation. She pauses for a while, pulling out her phone to use it as a flashlight. After a second of contemplation, she enters the narrow opening of the cave. The path is pitch black and is flooded with water. Only the light emitted by her phone screen serves as her guide. The water level also starts to get higher with every step she makes. At one point, only her head is sticking out of the water, increasing her anxiety. There is no guarantee that she can make it out of the cave alive, or even survive, if she accidentally falls into a deeper part. Her heightened senses get the best of her, prompting her to hurriedly find the swallow part of the water, gasping for breath. After recovering, she turns on her phone again and the next thing she sees is the moon demon standing in front of her. She quickly backs away, screaming, but to her surprise, they are not moving an inch. It's like they are frozen in time. She slowly and carefully walks past the demons, and then finds her way into a small cavern. There, a group of moon demons are in the same state as the ones she encountered outside. After passing through the group of moon demons, she once again walks into a narrow pathway leading to another cavern. In the end, Melissa notices blood dripping from the ceiling. When she checks, she finds Yul lying on top of a stone slab. The rest of the moon demons are standing still, facing Yul's body, waiting for him to bleed out. Melissa climbs up the slab and stares at Yul, who's now slowly transforming into a moon demon. She looks around and sees the slits on his wrists. A warm embrace from her wakes up Yul, who asks about the whereabouts of the demons. Melissa tells him they are all around them, standing still as if they are sleeping. Yul explains they are inside his head, waiting for him to breathe his last and finally turn into one of them. She then tries to convince Yul to get out of the cave, 
but he explains he already lost too much blood. Though the demons are not moving, they know Melissa is in the cave with them. And when Yul finally meets his demise, the moon demons will come after her. To save her, Yul begs for her to go, but Melissa refuses. She doesn't want to lose him and she cannot accept the reality. He then asks her to promise him that she will go see his grandma, because his family is now her family as well. Though Melissa is still having a hard time accepting the fact that she cannot leave with Yul, she promises to honor his wishes and gives him a warm kiss. Yul then tells her to go, but before she does, she puts the wedding ring back on his finger. She then climbs down the slab and slowly makes her way outside, sobbing. Her wails echo throughout the cave. Just as she finally recovers and decides to continue, Yul breathes his last. This means that the moon demons are finally back in control of their bodies. When she raises her head, the moon demons appear, ready to finish her off. A chase ensues and Melissa quickly tries to find her way out. At one point, she meets Ping, who has decided to s*** himself out of guilt. He points Melissa to the exit, while he tries to slow down the moon demons and allow her to escape. After bludgeoning Ping to his demise, the moon demons continue to chase Melissa. At last, she reaches the exit and quickly makes her way into the forest. There, the group of moon demons chases her. At the same time, the full moon slowly falls behind a mountain. Just as the demons are about to jump over her, the moon sets and the demons turn into silvery dust. When they disappear, Melissa is left confused. As the sun rises while she examines the fields, she sees Yul, fully transformed as a moon demon, standing still in front of her. She gives a slight smile of relief, knowing he came to say goodbye one last time. Her face radiates the feeling of grief, yet there is a hint of acceptance. She knows she will have to live the rest of her life without her husband. In the blink of an eye, Yul disappears, leaving Melissa staring at the rising sun. 